Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to this week's CMSA Interdisciplinary Science Seminar. And this week, we are very honored to have invited Professor Qi Feng Chen from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology to talk to us on exploring invertibility in image processing and restoration. Professor Chen is um, a professor in CSE and ECE at HKUST and Associate Director of Intelligent Autonomous Driving Center. He was named uh, one of 35 innovators on the certified in China in 2018 by MIT Technology Review. He received a PhD in computer science from Stanford University in 2017. His research interests include computer vision, machine learning, optimization, and computer graphics. He received the Best Paper Award at FTL IJK in 2021, and many of his papers were selected for full oral presentation in ICCV, CVPR, and many others. In 2011, he won second place worldwide at the ACM ICPC World Final, which is the most premier computation competition uh, premium uh, venue for the college program competitions. And he earned a gold medal at International Olympic Informatics and at 2007, and he's currently the coach of ACM ICPC at HQST. So Professor Chen, we very much look forward to your talk. Thanks uh, for the uh, introduction. And uh, it is my honor to share my uh, recent research uh, regarding the uh, invertibility in image processing and uh, restoration. So, um, so the researchers uh, in uh, computer vision are uh, mainly deal, dealing with uh, uh, tasks uh, in two uh, different types of uh, 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 models. Uh, one is uh, uh, discriminative models. Uh, where, for example, in image classification, uh, given an image, uh, we can uh, uh, assign a label to it. Uh, so this is image classification. Um, so most of the uh, problem will be uh, similar to this. And uh, there is another types of uh, task. Uh, it's uh, about uh, generative models. And uh, uh, the generative models uh, try to uh, generate, uh, for example, images uh, from some given uh, user input. Uh, for example, uh, uh, given a cat, uh, uh, class conditioned image synthesis model, like uh, uh, generative adversarial models can generate a, a cat image. Uh, so for instance, uh, so uh, Big Bang it, uh, can do such a task. And what is the invertibility? Uh, how we can uh, uh, consider uh, these two types of tasks in a single model? Um, so uh, we may think about, uh, can we have do some joint learning uh, where, okay, um, we can uh, have, uh, uh, you know, close to uh, bijection uh, mapping uh, between the input and output. Uh, and in fact, in image processing, we may be able to uh, achieve uh, such an uh, objective um, because uh, in such a case, it's, if we only get the uh, cat label, it's very hard to tell uh, what types of cat it is. But in image processing, usually uh, we uh, have the enhanced the image that the share the similar dimension as the input. So uh, we may think, uh, can we uh, have some model that's uh, as uh, immortable as possible? And uh, a lot of tasks uh, can be formulated under such a constraint, uh, having a, uh, an, uh, as immutable as possible model. For example, uh, image compression. Uh, we want to convert an image to some uh, binary code. And then, uh, and then the binary code is to be as small as possible. And at the same time, we want to reconstruct the original image. Uh, so in the uh, in, uh, reverse uh, process. So, um, so in such a task, uh, uh, we will consider uh, joint learning uh, between uh, two domains, uh, and uh, the two domains may not have the same uh, dimension. So it's impossible to have a, a invertible function between uh, them, but uh, uh, we want them to be as invertible as possible. So in this uh, talk, uh, we will talk about um, you know four uh, 
applications uh, of such models. And uh, the first one uh, is about uh, immutable image signal processing. So uh, in this task, uh, you know, our, our camera uh, would receive some uh, uh, photons into the uh, camera and then the, that will be represented as some raw data. And then there is some uh, image signal processing pipeline that converts the raw data to the RGB image. So this is the image signal processing uh, pipeline. Uh, so there is researchers uh, on how we can convert the raw data to nice RGB images. There is also research uh, on how we can uh, restore the original raw data uh, from the RGB image. So we will combine the two tasks uh, together. And uh, we will also look into how we can uh, apply uh, as invertible as possible models uh, in image uh, compression. And we obtain a model that outperforms uh, state-of-the-art uh, image uh, compression uh, methods. And uh, we will uh, also look into the uh, reversible image uh, conversion, uh, where we can uh, convert a short video into an image. And we can also restore the video uh, from an image. So for example, in uh, like the uh, live photo in our smartphone, like uh, iPhone, uh, that we can represent this uh, live photo, uh, which is a sequence of uh, uh, images as a single image. Uh, but at the same time, we can uh, restore a sequence of uh, 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 images from a single uh, image. And uh, lastly, uh, there is also an in uh, uh, a very hot topic in computer vision, uh, which is uh, normal V synthesis. And we present a new approach uh, that uh, uh, can embed some normal views in a single JPEG image. That means after we uh, have a, uh, a JPEG image uh, produced by our model, we can see the scene uh, in 3D. So, uh, so now we will uh, look into these problems uh, one by one. Um, so there is some uh, related work uh, done by other researchers, uh, for example, invertible grayscale, uh, where uh, we can convert a, a colorful image to a grayscale image. But at the same time, we can also uh, restore the original color image uh, from the grayscale image. Uh, that, that would uh, give us the original color. Uh, and uh, there is uh, uh, other uh, papers like invertible half, half tone uh, and multiple image rescaling, uh, where we can reconstruct high resolution image from low res and uh, uh, monetizing binocular videos uh, that perform some uh, stereo video and uh, 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 you know, um, monocular uh, video uh, conversion. So uh, this, this uh, 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 some some work done by others and uh, we will introduce uh, our research. So well, first, uh, we will in, uh, talk about our work uh, invertible image signal processing in CVPR. So um, raw data is a very important uh, uh, types of data for uh, uh, photographers, especially professional photographers. And uh, for uh, the high-end uh, cameras, uh, that, uh, we usually can uh, record uh, raw videos and uh, uh, raw images because uh, the uh, raw data, raw images uh, contain the uh, original intensity uh, of the scene. Uh, so it has a linear relationship with the scene irradiance, uh, but the RGB image don't have such a, a nice property. So it's always great to uh, somehow to uh, reconstruct, to have the raw uh, image. And one of my previous work so that uh, we can um, reconstruct when nice uh, 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 images in extremely dark environment from uh, uh, the raw data. Um, but you know the raw data is uh, uh, is uh, uh, usually quite large. Uh, it's uh, uh, you know uh, memory demanding. Uh, usually it takes uh, maybe thirty or forty uh, megabytes. It's much bigger than a, a JPEG image, and uh, uh, the raw may be uh, discarded after uh, we have the uh, uh, RGB image. Um, so, so our objective is, uh, can we get access to the original raw data without actually explicitly uh, storing it uh, so that we can actually re reconstruct it from the RGB image. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's have a glance uh, at our result. Uh, this is the uh, 
uh, the RGB image. And uh, this is the uh, uh, raw data. Uh, so the raw data is, uh, uh, you know, usually uh, before the white balance, you look at a little bit greenish. Uh, this is the error map uh, between the reconstructed raw data and the ground truth raw data. Um, so there are some prior work uh, that try to reconstruct the raw data, but our approach can do it uh, much better. So we can analyze uh, uh, the uh, process uh, in image signal processing. Uh, so actually there is a very long pipeline in the conventional uh, image signal processing um, so there is a white balance, uh, demosaking, uh, denoising, uh, tone uh, reproduction, uh, JPEG compression. Uh, there are some steps uh, that would um, make the, uh, uh, can lead to some information loss. And uh, in, in principle, it's uh, uh, impossible to reconstruct the original uh, uh, you know, raw data. For example, if we uh, do some denoising, we smooth out the image and uh, how can we uh, reconstruct the original noise. Yeah, so so it uh, still pose the problem. Uh, so um, and uh, we further analyze uh, you know different types of uh, uh, you know uh, information loss uh, in this uh, uh, pipeline uh, quantization, on mapping, out of range clipping. For example, when the intensity is uh, beyond two fifty five, we would have this out out of range clipping. JPEG compression uh, that would uh, introduce some uh, JPEG artifacts. So, um, so even so, so my uh, our approach is, uh, in fact, uh, we may consider designing uh, a, a model uh, with a, a invertible neural network. Uh, so there are some, uh, uh, there are already some uh, invertible neural network uh, that uh, tried. That so 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 that uh, it's uh, strictly invertible, and uh, we modify uh, such a model so that uh, that can uh, um, act as a, a good model to reconstruct the original uh, raw data. So this is a highlight uh, 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 overview of our approach. Um, so our approach would represent the image signal processing as a, a invertible network F, and uh, in the um, and we want to reconstruct the raw data. We would. Uh, use the uh, inverse function uh, of the F, um, so 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 that we can uh, have uh, enable some other application, uh, for example HDR reconstruction, uh, image uh, retouching, and uh, uh, at the same time we are like uh, doing some uh, raw data compression. So um, our our model is uh, built upon uh, the uh, affine the uh, immutable affine coupling layers. Um, so the uh, a fine coupling layers uh, uh, was uh, uh, proposed, uh, and uh, that has a uh, two uh, branch. Uh, I, I will. Uh, uh, we can look at it uh, later. And uh, the, the our pipeline is uh, we uh, we firstly convert the raw data to a uh, mosaic uh, uh, raw data, so that uh, um, it has three channels. The original raw data has only one channel, and then uh, we would apply this uh, invertible model uh, blocks uh, multiple times. Uh, to get the uh, rendered image uh, that, that can be uh, similar to uh, what we expect. Um, but there is a process uh, that's uh, not differentiable. Uh, the JPEG com uh, compression inherently is not uh, differentiable, but uh, we uh, have a, uh, used a differentiable version uh, for it uh, in this uh, model so that we can uh, perform some um, back propagation uh, to train the model. And uh, this is uh, uh, the affine uh, coupling layer. Uh, so I uh, so basically it has uh, uh, two branches, um, and uh, uh, the 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 uh, one to D and D plus one to uh, the uppercase D. And um, so 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 that uh, uh, that we can perform some transformation from M uh, to N uh, in this uh, process. And here, the S and T uh, can be uh, any uh, function. Uh, and uh, we, we can show that this inverse function can be written in this way. So, so that uh, the M and N can be uh, invert, uh, yeah, can, can, can be computed uh, uh, by this uh, uh, invertible function. Um, so there is another obstacle in uh, our task, uh, which is uh, the JPEG. 
uh, compression. Uh, the JPEG compression uh, is not, uh, you know, differentiable. For example, uh, in the quantization step, uh, it will do some rounding. Uh, so we uh, we use uh, such a function uh, to approximate this uh, rounding function. It's close to a rounding function, basically to do some uh, Fourier transform uh, to this. Uh, uh, non uh, this uh, rounding function. So, so that in the end, uh, we can uh, perform some uh, you know, uh, back propagation. Um, let's look at some uh, qualitative result first. And uh, uh, this is the raw data, this is ground truth. We also tried different uh, architectures and uh, uh, our approach can, um, we can, uh, can generate the corresponding RGB image high quality uh, while they reconstructed the uh, raw data as the least uh, amount of error. Um, we perform experiments on two types of cameras. Uh, one is the uh, Nikon camera and another is uh, the Canon camera. Um, so you can see that the, uh, the, uh, the RGB uh, uh, images are generated by our approach and the raw data uh, both have a relatively high uh, PSNR. Uh, usually when uh, the PSNR uh, is beyond 30, uh, it's hard to uh, tell the difference uh, be between two images. So now we, in, uh, in the raw data, we can even achieve uh, 45 and uh, 48 uh, in PSN, uh, dB in PSNR. Um, so we can enable uh, the application like image retouching and uh, uh, reconstruction that, um, you know, uh, the result will be the same as uh, having the uh, original raw data, but original raw data can be uh, quite large, uh, uh, but we only need a, a small JPEG image. So um, um, that means uh, we can achieve a, a very high compression rate. Uh, we uh, can achieve about uh, 30X uh, in the uh, compression rate uh, compared to, uh, just as uh, storing the original uh, raw data. Yeah. So uh, uh, if um, so, we have the source code. So uh, if you're interested, uh, you may uh, go visit uh, this uh, GitHub website. So here we demonstrate uh, one of the uh, application uh, where we unify uh, two types of a uh, uh, problem in a single uh, network, and then uh, we further explore uh, such a. a a model and uh, see its uh, power, uh, maybe uh, in image compression. Uh, you know, image compression has been uh, studied for a long time. And uh, uh, recently, deep, uh, learning based approach uh, has been uh, uh, showing some good performance, but it's still uh, not outperforming the conventional uh, signal processing based uh, methods. And uh, we saw an approach. Uh, that's uh, slightly better than the uh, uh, state-of-the-art uh, VTM uh, uh, comp image compression method. So, um, so in uh, image uh, compression, uh, so usually we would consider uh, some lossy uh, image uh, compression uh, pipe pipeline, and uh, we would have some model um, that uh, uh, would transform an image X uh, to some uh, feature Y. And then this uh, uh, feature Y would go through some arithmetic uh, coding that uh, would convert the uh, features uh, into some uh, binary uh, encoding. And um, when we want to reconstruct the original image, this is the step of uh, decoding uh, where we would uh, reconstruct the original image uh, here. So um, for example, in a JPEG compression, uh, we would uh, use uh, this uh, uh, DCT uh, to uh, in the uh, uh, encoding and uh, the inverse of DCT to do the uh, decoding. Mm -hmm. So we have this uh, encoder and uh, decoder. Uh, if uh, we have an end-to-end learning-based uh, uh, approach, um, so uh, most of the uh, framework will follow such a, a pipeline. So what we think, uh, um, you know, uh, so, so we don't touch the, uh, much on this part. This uh, uh, would be about the, how we convert the, uh, some uh, compressed feature uh, to some binary coding. Um, so there are already some uh, prior work. Uh, there are different ways how we can perform some arithmetic uh, uh, to, to do this. 
And uh, our focus uh, in our pipeline is uh, how we can uh, unify uh, these two parts. Uh, one is the encoding and uh, the decoding part. And uh, uh, so that we can uh, have uh, uh, as uh, like a model that is uh, as immutable as possible. But note that uh, uh, the image and the uh, feature uh, don't have the same uh, dimension. You know, we want to do the uh, compression. Uh, we usually want to make the uh, dimension to be uh, smaller. Uh, so, uh, so that uh, imposes uh, uh, some challenges uh, for us. Uh, so, so then uh, we can uh, consider using uh, immutable neural networks. Uh, so there are some nice property uh, of it. Uh, so uh, the uh, it maintains a projective mapping uh, between the inputs and outputs. That's nice, and uh, uh, and it's easy to compute. And uh, there is a trackable uh, uh, Jacobian uh, so that we can uh, also compute the posterior uh, probability uh, exactly. Uh, so so there, there is uh, some nice uh, property, um, but there is some challenges uh, at the same time um, because uh, we uh, need to do this uh, uh, compression and the, uh, due to this uh, uh, dimension uh, reduction, um, so we have to handle how we can uh, address the issue for low bit rate uh, compression. Uh, there are some uh, prior work that try to uh, 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 address this. Um, so, uh, but uh, the, we find that the existing uh, solution uh, don't produce a very uh, good result, and uh, uh, they are not very stable uh, for uh, training. So maybe we can uh, relax the. Uh, the, the strict form of the immutable neural network and introduce some, uh, you know, uh, non, non immutable uh, components uh, to the model uh, because uh, uh, the immutable uh, functions uh, usually have a, a very uh, uh, restricted uh, uh, form, especially the immutable neural networks uh, we are using. So, therefore, we uh, introduce uh, such a network. It composes uh, uh, the following parts. Um, so let's see them uh, one by one from the beginning. Um, so first of all, we will have some uh, feature enhancement uh, network uh, where we use some um, uh, uh, convolutional neural network to transform an image uh, to some uh, features. And then uh, this uh, enhanced feature will put into uh, this uh, uh, invertible neural network. Um, so the invertible neural network contains uh, uh, pixel shuffling layers, uh, invertible one by one convolutional layer, and uh, 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 a fine coupling layers. Uh, all of these layers uh, uh, are all uh, invertible, and uh, we um, but you know uh, the, uh, the the uh, to achieve some um, image uh, compression, uh, we have to reduce the dimension. Uh, so what we do is. Uh, uh, in this uh, 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 channel squeeze layer, uh, what we do is uh, we would, um, you know, uh, a, fe a feature map in a, a deep neural network will have multiple channels. We just uh, average all these uh, channels into one and uh, so that we can uh, reduce the uh, amount of information. And then during the uh, reverse pass, um, so uh, we have one channel, but we want to get back to uh, multiple channel. We just copy this uh, single channel multiple times to uh, to get back the original that I mentioned, and we also apply some uh, attention to it uh, to uh, further enhance the uh, features. Mm -hmm. So, um, using such a, a, a model, we can uh, look at uh, some of the results. Um, so, the uh, the first figure is an experiment on the. Uh, Public benchmark uh, codec data set. Our approach uh, uh, in terms of the PSNR uh, um, using the uh, MSC loss uh, is our this uh, blue line. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's not easy to make a, a big improvement in uh, uh, compression. Uh, and then this uh, uh, VTM, uh, which is this uh, pink uh, curve, is this one. And we, um, our approach significantly outperform other learning based uh, uh, approach uh, that were proposed uh, for image uh, compression. Uh, we also have a similar uh, 
a result on another data set. So we can uh, visualize some uh, of the visual results. Uh, given similar uh, bit rate, uh, we, we, we can visualize the image uh, quality. Uh, for example, uh, on this image, uh, if we want to achieve uh, uh, a bit rate like uh, 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 0 0.13 uh, bit per pixel, and then uh, our result, uh, this is the ground truth, original one. And this is our reconstructed uh, compressed image. Uh, this is the result by uh, uh, VPM. Uh, this is just by JPEG. Uh, if uh, we uh, uh, have a very limited uh, bit, uh, uh, bit uh, per pixel. Yeah. So uh, uh, you, you can see the, uh, the visual difference. Mm -hmm. So um, this shows, uh, shows that the, uh, adding some uh, immutable uh, component uh, in the model can help uh, in such a, a task. Uh, so uh, those uh, inher inherently we want to do both, uh, you know, encoding and uh, decoding. And then uh, we further uh, uh, expand such an idea maybe to uh, uh, some other task, uh, which is a, a generic uh, a framework for reversible image uh, conversion. So I will first uh, introduce uh, what's a uh, uh, reversible image conversion. Mm -hmm. So nowadays, uh, uh, due to our uh, the advancement uh, in uh, uh, smartphones and uh, uh, different uh, cameras, uh, uh, the the multimedia format is not just uh, an image. Uh, for example, on Huawei uh, P30 uh, smartphone, we will have the dual view images, uh, which essentially uh, concatenate the uh, uh, you know, wide angle uh, image and uh, uh, telephoto image. And uh, there is uh, uh, also uh, live photos uh, in uh, iPhone, uh, you know, uh, binocular images. Okay, all of them will have a different format. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, this format may not be supported uh, uh, widely. Uh, for example, uh, how can you share a live photo on WeChat? Uh, or uh, maybe uh, uh, on other uh, uh, WhatsApp, uh, so so it may not be well supported. And uh, we are considering maybe we can uh, in convert all of this uh, into a single format, uh, which is a uh, uh, image uh, format. So uh, and uh, also the, we we would see that the data uh, we get are getting uh, also bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would uh, consider uh, whether we can embed all this um, uh, multimedia format into a single uh, image, and then uh, we can uh, at the same time restore uh, the original content. Mm -hmm. So this uh, uh, is so-called uh, uh, reversible image uh, conversion task. And in fact, uh, in the past, uh, such a task uh, would uh, be studied uh, 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 separately. And uh, we want to have a generic uh, framework that can work for uh, or all of this kind of uh, uh, you know uh, 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 data format, and uh, that can that has a lot of benefits. Uh, that can uh, save the uh, storage and uh, uh, save the uh, transmission uh, bandwidth, and uh, so and it also has a, a backward compatible solution. So uh, let's look at some existing uh, uh, methods. There is a work called the video uh, snapshot. Uh, that performs uh, uh, a short video and uh, image uh, 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 conversion. Uh, so we can convert short video uh, to uh, an image, and we can also reconstruct the video from such a uh, 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 you know Im image. Mm -hmm. Its uh, uh, quality is uh, not uh, very good, and there is some artifact. And there is uh, uh, also another work uh, that will perform conversions uh, between. Uh, binocular uh, image and uh, uh, you know monocular image. So uh, these are all uh, task specific and uh, they, they have a different uh, specific designs uh, for different tasks. And we saw that we can have a unified framework uh, for all of these tasks and then we can also achieve uh, better performance. So uh, we uh, our approach uh, would uh, uh, take uh, um, multiple image uh, into uh, image patch or uh, video into uh, as an input. And then uh, we will have a relation 
a module that uh, uh, similar to the previous work uh, that, ha uh, that has a multiple parallel uh, convolutional blocks that try to uh, enhance the feature and, uh, uh, and then uh, have a, a re residual network to, uh, 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 to connect to them. Uh, so we would enhance the feature for each uh, frame. And then uh, the um, uh, middle part would be uh, based on the existing uh, conventional uh, invertible neural network and uh, uh, also the channel squeezer, uh, uh, you know, uh, idea. And um, so in, in the back, uh, uh, back work, uh, we, we would do the uh, similar uh, thing. And uh, uh, one interesting aspect here is uh, the, uh, uh, the, the embedded image can be of a lower resolution. Uh, for example, uh, uh, now we have uh, maybe here we have five frames and then uh, uh, we can embed this five frame in a even lower resolution image and we can still uh, reconstruct a high resolution uh, video uh, from, from this uh, single image. So this uh, is the low res uh, embedded uh, image and this is the restore one. Um, so we have uh, uh, go through uh, all of this uh, uh, pipeline. So this is the uh, forward pass. And then uh, from the backward pass, uh, we will do this. Mm -hmm. so, um, so because our framework is uh, very general, uh, we will test on uh, three traditional tasks and two new tasks. Uh, then uh, we will show them uh, one by one. And two uh, single to single uh, image uh, uh, reversible uh, uh, you know, task. Um, so for example, the first one would be uh, the uh, spatial temporal uh, video embedding. Um, so uh, the previous approach, uh, when they do this uh, embedding, they have to hide the, uh, some information from other frame uh, in some way. What we see is uh, they uh, essentially, uh, they essentially create some uh, high frequency and uh, this high frequency uh, in their approach uh, actually uh, would be used to decode the uh, information. And our approach doesn't have, have uh, this uh, artifact. Um, there are uh, uh, also other results and uh, we can achieve a relatively high, uh, you know, uh, PSNR in the restored uh, video. Uh, here is another application uh, where we can convert uh, a low, low resolution, low frame rate video uh, into a high resolution, high frame rate uh, video uh, using our pipeline. Uh, here is uh, for, for the GIF file, uh, we can do a uh, similar uh, thing. Uh, there is another task uh, called the uh, uh, monetizing uh, binocular images where we do the uh, stereo image and a single image conversion. Uh, so uh, our approach uh, would perform also better than their task uh, spe specific uh, uh, framework. And uh, uh, for the, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, there is another application uh, where, uh, you know, we, we, we can inherently, uh, so this is the original left view, original right view. And uh, we only need to store the, uh, left view uh, so that uh, we can restore uh, uh, both uh, left and uh, right view uh, for, for the video. And um, there, uh, this is the dual view images. Uh, we, uh, where uh, this uh, dual image will contain uh, both uh, original image and then the zoom in image here, uh, which can be embedded uh, in a single image. Um, so there is also a very uh, uh, practical application. Uh, think about in Photoshop, we may have multiple image layers. And uh, after we composite all of this image layer, uh, we will lose the original, uh, maybe the background uh, information. And our approach uh, can allows us to uh, automatically uh, uh, recover the, uh, the background uh, image uh, from the uh, com composite uh, image, um, so 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 that we we can uh, uh, you know easily uh, so uh, get back the original uh, content. So uh, in uh, steganography, there is also a task about 
hiding uh, images in another image. And uh, our approach can also uh, achieve uh, such a purpose and uh, uh, also achieve a, a very good performance. So uh, in summary, uh, we uh, have a unified model uh, that can perform uh, multiple tasks and uh, also uh, got, uh, get very uh, good performance. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so let's, uh, uh, I think we have uh, seen the, uh, all of this uh, demo uh, just now. Yeah. So, uh, so, so this uh, shows some uh, low resolution, low frame rate video and high resolution, high frame rate video uh, version. All right, uh, lastly, uh, you know, uh, how I will introduce a work uh, uh, about how we can see the scene. Uh, in 3D uh, from a single JPEG image. Um, so uh, nowadays uh, there are a lot of uh, research on uh, how we can uh, uh, generate uh, novel views. And uh, there is a question uh, how, how we can uh, store these uh, uh, novel view uh, models. And uh, you know, uh, it's not easy to share this model uh, on the uh, internet and also the uh, model may be large uh, so uh, there is no uh, generic uh, file format uh, for this. So uh, maybe we can uh, consider to have a, a unified uh, format uh, uh, so that we can see all of this data uh, on social media, on the web browser, on phone. So uh, maybe we think uh, a JPEG image may be a, a, a very good uh, mo uh, file format so that we can share everywhere. So our approach uh, would consider uh, a specific uh, novel view synthesis model, which is called MPI, multi-plane uh, image model. Um, with, uh, it, it essentially shows the image at different depth uh, planes. And uh, what we want is uh, maybe we can uh, convert um, about 32 images uh, into a single image. And uh, there are uh, essentially, um, what we, after we have uh, such a, a framework, uh, we can, uh, uh, for user A, uh, we can uh, embed uh, the, a novel synthesis model in a single JPEG image. And then after we share it on the internet, uh, on social media, if uh, user B, if uh, it doesn't have the corresponding decoding uh, software or plugin, uh, you will see this a uh, natural image. If it's this a uh, plugin, it, uh, it can uh, view this image in 3D. So our framework uh, would uh, consider, uh, you know, the following, uh, uh, you know, pipeline. So the input would con contain the input uh, alpha layers and the RGB layers. So there are totally 128 uh, channels, and uh, we would have some uh, feature, uh, fusion, uh, uh, you know, uh, block that uh, enhance the feature using the convolutional neural network. And, um, and also combine uh, with the uh, original reference image uh, where we uh, like embed some uh, information in this uh, image. And then uh, at the end, uh, we still put it through an embedding network, then encoder. And uh, we will train this model uh, strongly uh, with, uh, uh, so that it can be robust to different uh, uh, image uh, storation, uh, for example, JPEG compression color uh, transform and random cropping. That means even we edit the image, we can still uh, reconstruct the original uh, MPI layers. After we get the MPI layers, uh, we can uh, perform some uh, novel view synthesis so that we can see the scene uh, like in 3D. Um, so uh, compared to other alternative approach, uh, our approach uh, uh, obtains uh, uh, better performance uh, in both uh, uh, embedding uh, images and uh, rendered uh, images. So then uh, we can uh, uh, on two uh, different uh, types of uh, uh, methods. Uh, so then we can uh, look at some of the results. So um, this is our method. Uh, this is our rendered uh, image. Uh, so uh, so because uh, uh, in this data set, uh, uh, the baseline is not very large, so uh, we, we see a relatively small uh, motion of the camera uh, to, to see the uh, images uh, in uh, uh, 3D. And our approach 
uh, would generate the, uh, the view. So all of this is generated from a single uh, image. This is a single embedded uh, image. And uh, the, uh, you can see the quality is uh, much better than other alternative uh, approaches. So um, with uh, such a method, uh, we can uh, easily, uh, uh, I think in the future, uh, we may have, uh, um, you know, in, in uh, the, the normal V synthesis uh, images uh, would be very, maybe a new uh, form of uh, image. Uh, so uh, uh, we, we, we can uh, represent this uh, kind of uh, uh, model uh, initially in uh, just a, a single uh, JPEG image. And it's also robust, somehow robust to uh, some degree of uh, uh, distortion. So, all right. Um, so, so far we have uh, uh, introduced uh, uh, all applications um, using uh, designing some as invertible as possible models. Um, so these models are not strictly uh, invertible, but uh, we try to um, optimize the model uh, so that uh, uh, it can uh, reconstruct the original uh, information uh, from the processed uh, image uh, or data. And uh, uh, so such an idea, I think, uh, can be also applicable uh, to other domains. Um, so, uh, in, uh, for example, uh, maybe for videos, uh, we can uh, also, uh, so most of, most of work uh, so far is uh, on images, but uh, maybe we can embed more information in the uh, video. Uh, maybe we can also embed some uh, speech uh, from uh, uh, in, in, in an image. Uh, maybe we can even uh, embed an image in some text. Maybe uh, we, we can set embed the image information in some text that's, uh, you know, like a scientific report, but there, there is an image hidden in the text. So there is a, a lot of interesting application potentially uh, using this kind of uh, as immutable as possible idea. So uh, there are uh, many more uh, work uh, that, and we have a, a source code uh, for, uh, most of the project uh, we, we do and uh, you are welcome to visit uh, my uh, personal website and uh, check out more uh, project. Thank you. Thank you everyone. So any questions? That's a lot of amazing work. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I, I first have a quick question. Um, um, in the previous slide, um, what is the video snap reconstruction? Okay, so um, so in uh, one of the prior work is uh, the uh, video snapshot. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go back to one of the slides that describe this uh, uh, method. Thing. Um, yeah, so, so basically uh, in this method, uh, it, it converts a video, a video to a single image. Um, so this, and then this a video snapshot, maybe this um, video, uh, image, a video frame, and then uh, it, uh, we, we can, uh, reconstruct uh, this uh, uh, original uh, video from this uh, uh, single image. Uh, that, that, that's uh, their uh, pipeline and uh, it has to take into uh, the uh, motion information specifically. Uh, and our approach is very uh, generic. That doesn't have any assumption in the input sequence. I see, I see. Okay. Very good question. Uh, any questions uh, from, uh, from the audience? I uh, may ask one more when other people are trying to, you know, think of their question, formulate your question. So in the relation module, um, what is it actually doing before the 
Um, decoding, decoding. So, so uh, I think that, okay, this, okay, these are uh, blue, black, uh, and yellow are just uh, the, uh, uh, the original image uh, uh, in the input. And uh, these are the uh, uh, features. We actually use some uh, dense block uh, here to process uh, each uh, frame uh, uh, separately. Um, so uh, basically it try to, because the original RGB uh, values are not uh, a good representation, uh, normally we would uh, want to enhance the uh, feature. So here we apply some uh, convolutional neural networks uh, blocks, to enhance the uh, image feature here. And, uh, in the end, we have a, a residual block uh, to uh, what it learns is the residual uh, to add, add to the input image. Is it like the encoder decoder or a many? Uh, yes, basically it's a, a, like an encoder decoder. You, you can see that uh, in this way, it's the encoder. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so uh, this part is encoder and uh, this part is the decoder. So basically, it uh, this part encoder, this part decoder, it combines encoder decoder with uh, invertible network. Yeah. So part of it is invertible, part of it is not strictly invertible. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, thank you. Actually, um, maybe a technical detail question, like how do you um, do the invertible in a neural network? Uh, yes, uh, maybe. So uh, this would be based on the uh, prior work, uh, basically uh, from uh, this paper, we can go to uh, one of the slides that uh, talk about uh, uh, this. Mm -hmm. so, um, so now, uh, you know, if a, uh, uh, if we have uh, uh, um, in 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 this uh, format, in this format, uh, we can uh, if uh, we have uh, uh, input M, we separate it into two parts, uh, M uh, channel one to D, and uh, uh, another map D plus one to D. So so consider uh, for example. A vector, okay, the first uh, D element and then the rest element. Uh, or in the feature map, uh, we can consider the fe uh, feature map from the channel, the first D channel and then the rest uh, channel. And uh, first we can uh, uh, check, okay, we generate an output, basically it would be the sum uh, of uh, this uh, uh, M uh, from uh, element one to D and then some transformation uh, some function are uh, on this part. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the second part uh, of the output would be uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, second part of the input M uh, with some uh, element-wise uh, uh, product uh, with the exponential of uh, uh, this, uh, another S function and T function uh, on the, uh, this part. And with some uh, simple arithmetic uh, uh, formulation and we can show that, okay, uh, this uh, uh, would be, uh, this part would be equal to this part minus this part and uh, divided by this part. And it essentially it would be equivalent to this. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then they, uh, and uh, we, we, we can also get the original input uh, in uh, uh, this way. Um, so, so, so we can verify this and uh, there, there is a lot of freedom in uh, it, its power comes from, there is a lot of freedom in the function R, S and T uh, where we can use any uh, function like a, a complex a neural network or we can use a transformer. Uh, so that that will have a lot of uh, freedom. So, so this is uh, uh, the main uh, building block uh, of the network. Uh, we we are base uh, our approach is based on the uh, this uh, fine uh, coupling layer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, uh, any more questions? I have a somewhat naive question related to this invertibility. I, I'm sorry, I didn't look at the original paper that you are uh, that you say is is on the uh, underlying the the method, but uh, it looks like uh, intuitively that basically you are encoding the input into the output directly, uh, and and so that's this is how we, you are able to easily invert the uh, the result of the neural network transformation is it, is this so, somewhat close to what you're doing uh yeah so it may be uh, interpreted uh, in such a way um you know uh so well the, uh compared to the conventional uh embedding methods where that doesn't uh, guarantee that uh, we can uh, reconstruct the original content from the encoding. Uh, but in this uh, a fine coupling layer, uh, we can guarantee that uh, we can reconstruct uh, the original input from the encoding. So, so this uh, uh, that that uh, uh, is uh, guaranteed by this uh, uh, formulation. And uh, uh, since it has uh, uh, also a good amount of freedom in the choice of uh, function R, S, T, uh, it has, uh, uh, it allows the model to do many uh, non-trivial transformation of the input uh, while maintaining the invertibility. So uh, I think that that's the uh, 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 one of the uh, interpretation of such a, a layer. So thank, thanks a, a lot for this uh, good question. Okay, um, any other questions? So, uh... I mean, I, I don't fully understand a lot of stuff here, but uh, uh, one thing that if you just think about it, so whether or not you can build this invertible network, it really depends on you know what you are trying to approximate in the forward direction, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, let's forget about the, you know the invertibility, like. Uh, let's say you can do it, is it always the case that for the task that you care, the inverse is stable? So uh, in a lot of case, in, in, well, just, uh, in, in some cases, a uh, 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 perfect uh, invertibility uh, cannot be guaranteed. Uh, for example, in image uh, compression, uh, you know, we mapping uh, high dimensional data to low dimensional uh, encoding. So uh, it's uh, uh, impossible to uh, do this. And uh, in image processing, there is another uh, issue that uh, uh, make it different to uh, have a perfect invertibility. Uh, for example, quantization uh, on the output and uh, compression. Uh, actually, we will represent this. Uh, 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 so, um, so that's uh, something uh, we need to uh, also address. Uh, it's not even we think about uh, when we want to do some simple uh, transformation. Uh, for example, we in, uh, enhance the image intensity by a factor of two. Um, so inherently, this sounds uh, invertible to get back the resume, just divided by two. But um, because when we store the image, we have a uh, quantization due to rounding. Uh, maybe uh, the uh, all over, all, uh, all over exposure, uh, it will clip at 255. So uh, quite frequently, we cannot uh, guarantee that uh, the, and also compression artifact, uh, it, uh, uh, there's some obstacle uh, that uh, doesn't make it uh, perfectly invertible. Uh, we are not storing the image as a 
a floating number. Uh, that has an uh, infinite, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, yeah, we can store uh, infinitely long uh, 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 bits uh, for each number. We only have eight bits usually uh, for each, uh, uh, RGB channel. So that's some practical issue uh, we uh, need to address uh, in, in this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a follow up question, like um, why each is eight bit and the floating number make a difference? Uh, yes. Uh, so well, uh, if uh, uh, can consider if uh, we can have a, a floating number, uh, maybe we can uh, hide the information uh, in the uh, digit of uh, uh, you know uh, you know. Uh, after the decimal point, uh, yeah. so we, we can a uh, high infinite amount of uh, information if uh, we can have an uh, infinitely uh, uh, large uh, capacity for the floating number. So, uh, so from the point of uh, information bottleneck, uh, uh, maybe uh, this is a practical question. We we uh, only uh, want to store the image with uh, eight bits. Uh, so this is uh, uh, a standard. Or even in some cases, uh, we would do some compression. Uh, so that, that's some, some uh, convention we are using. I see. So that, that will make a, a difference. I see. Uh, in principle, actually, we can actually hide the whole image into a single number. We just <laughs> add uh, uh, all the numbers one by one in a very long floating number. Right. We have yeah, I see. Yeah. For it. yeah. So uh, uh, we have to consider uh, some limited uh, 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 a bit uh, for, for the image. Yes, yes, got it. Okay, uh, any more questions? I, I have a, a, a following question, a follow up really. Um, I imagine that uh, give, given, uh, I don't know how, how you're thinking about it, but say if we are, think, if we are constrained in terms of the capacity uh, of say memory that we, ha that we have for storing our um, output of, uh, of our networks, then uh, conditional on the on this size that we have, there is a trade-off. Whether how ac how accurate will be the image or the video itself versus how accurate will be the inversion that we will be able to perform after we have produced the image. How are you thinking about this trade-off? Uh, yes, there is a, a, a trade-off uh, in this. Uh, so if, uh, you know, our rendered image uh, will deviate uh, a little bit from the ground truth image uh, because uh, we need to hide some in information there. Uh, so if uh, uh, the, the embedding image or the rendered uh, Im uh, image here would deviate more, uh, so that it can embed more information, then the reconstruction result will be better. But the embedding uh, result will be worse. Uh, so uh, on the other hand, if uh, we uh, don't allow the uh, the render the image deviate too much, then uh, uh, then the resolution will be worse. So we have to um, strike a balance uh, uh, in in this case, and uh, uh, it really depends on the uh, application. Um, so how much, uh, you know, would be, uh, we, we, we probably have to tune uh, this uh, to, to reach a point that we are uh, uh, satisfied uh, with both uh, render the image and then the restore the uh, result. Um, so, so one solution maybe, uh, maybe we can uh, consider uh, the, we want to maximize the sum uh, uh, of the PSNR of the 
uh, render the image and uh, restore the image or the minimum. Uh, we want to maximize the minimum PSNR of the two. So there, there is some uh, uh, potential uh, objective uh, we can uh, explore. So this is uh, actually a very good question. Uh, we have to do such a, uh, a trade-off and uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's like an image compression, right? So uh, if uh, we have a, a smaller image size, then the image quality must be worse. But uh, we, we really can think how much we want to uh, afford in the uh, image size. So there is no uh, definite answer how much we want to do uh, in the, uh, for example, in the image compression. Yeah, very good question. Okay, uh, any more question? It's very, really a very wonderful talk and I think many, everyone really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Yang Yang. Thank you, everyone. So uh, if you have uh, uh, any idea related to this, uh, welcome to send me an email. I'm uh, happy to uh, discuss uh, some related uh, ideas or research with you.